How do you see AI impacting job creation and disruption, maybe even destruction in the next decade? Abdullah, did you want to kick us off? Sure. Uh, thank you for having us. And I think it's this is the most common question we get asked now is, uh, Am I going to lose my job? Is a robot going to be, you know, doing what I do tomorrow morning? And I think there, there's a few angles to consider this. This is not new, right? This is this innovation curve has happened before multiple, multiple times. And I, I always like to use the example of, you know, uh, Oxford University professors protesting against calculators when calculators first came out, and they thought mathematicians were going to be irrelevant, but. At every you know, uh, industrial shift, or when we see a new technology like this come out, what happens is it divides the workforce into two uh, operators and people who fall beyond the operations lines, which means when email was invented, mailmen did not just disappear. Uh, we still have mailmen. They just operate at a lower level in terms of income, in terms of compensation, in terms of, and so on and so forth while you have other people who've escalated and became mail operators or technology operators, and, and, and that sort of uh, uh, you know, creates that divide. And I think AI is gonna do uh, very much the same, whereby AI is gonna take a lot of, at, at the first stance or at the first phase of AI, it's gonna mostly take over the repetitive jobs that are more labor oriented, that AI does very good at things that we do in repetition. And that will leave people with a lot more time to do other stuff, where I think people are going to have to create another class of jobs and so on and so forth. So this is my 30 seconds of thoughts on it. Yeah, really fascinating. Joe, what's your take? How do you see AI disrupting, uh, destructing and creating the jobs of the future? Yeah, um, I love this question. I think there's a narrative that's perpetuated that AI is here to take all our jobs. And I think the way we, we see it at Majid al Futaim anyway is it's really here to elevate the human and um, that it's, uh, it's not AI that's going to take our jobs, it's AI that's going to take the jobs of people who don't know about AI. And I think it's very easy to get caught up in the hype cycle of AI, but the reality is we have to have an epistemic humility about this. We don't know exactly where it's going. And as a result, I think job creation will focus really on those people that are able to adapt and change and pivot and can keep up in the age of AI with the pace that it's going at and have that humility, as I mentioned, to know that we simply don't know where some of this might go and to be ready for where it brings us. Mm, very interesting. Mm -hmm. Nella, what's your take? First of all, thanks uh, to the audience, and I, I can tell the interest. Um, and I agree with these comments about AI's ability to change how we work. But I think where AI shows up the, the earliest is with companies. Most companies are trying to figure out how to manage their human capital. It's their most important asset. It's their most expensive asset. And I think what AI does is change the way companies view human capital management. And maybe even, if, we're, if we get it right, they move from management to development. Um, at ADP, we operate in about 140 countries, and we're really keen on how companies manage their workforce. And we found that looking at 53 million workers over a span of four years, I want you to just think in your head how many of them were actually upskilled by their companies. Okay, picture that number. Ask yourself if, if it's double digits or not, and then I'll give you the answer. Less than 4%. Less than 4% of these 53 million workers were upskilled by their company in two years. So, so there's an enormous opportunity, even in the absence of AI, to lead to a skilled workforce and a workforce that has con continuous learning. And so I think what AI does first and foremost is change how companies view their talent and hopefully helps them invest in that talent. Okay, hold that thought. I wanted to come straight back to that. But Stuart, first, what's your view? Uh, so I think the answer depends on whether you're looking at AI as it exists now or as it will exist over the next decade. And there are plenty of experts uh, who are predicting that by the end of this decade, so six years from now, uh, we will have AI systems that exceed human capabilities in every dimension. So that literally means that there isn't a job that the AI system won't be able to do cheaper and better 
And interestingly, for a long time, economists would give you a theorem with Greek letters saying, we can prove that there's no such thing as technological unemployment. But then you point out, okay, well, suppose I can make a twin of every person, and that twin is better at their job and never gets hung over and is willing to work for free, right? How many of you would still have your job? And then the economists say, ah, I see what you mean. Yes, there, there might be more employment, it just wouldn't be employment of humans. And so if you're making policy, it's really tough because I would say, you know, roughly half of experts think it's going to happen in the next decade that we will have this uh, all-powerful technology. And another half, including myself, think it's going to take quite a bit longer than that. And in fact, we're overestimating the capabilities of the technologies that exist at present. And the consequences of scaling those technologies are not as profound as, they, uh, as many of the proponents think. Um, but we are already seeing significant impact. Surprisingly, uh, I, I think Abdullah's right, a lot of the repetitive jobs, the jobs where you hire people by the hundred or the thousand uh, as exchangeable robots, right? those jobs are going to be done by real robots. Um, but we're also seeing impact on creative industries. So graphic artists, freelance writers, there are clear measurements we can make on the online marketplaces where they acquire work, the sort of exchanges. And you can see the prices going down on those marketplaces because people are able to use AI uh, to do those jobs in a tenth of the time. And uh, you know, parents, when I, when I give talks to the general public, uh, it's not so much, are they gonna take my job? It's what are my kids gonna do? What should I teach them? Uh, what, what courses should they take? And in the near term, uh, there will be demand for AI engineers and robot engineers, but in the long term, it's got to be interpersonal skills. Right? It's gonna be a very different kind of economy when uh, the, the production of the basic wherewithal of life uh, is turned over to machines. And uh, so think about what that means in terms of almost everyone being self-employed, uh, the kinds of education you need to be good at interpersonal roles, uh, and, and how we succeed in delivering high value in those roles, given that we have, you know, we have 200 years of not doing scientific research on, on how to live a good life or how to help someone else live a good life. So there's a lot of work to do.